Hello friends, this video on changes around us part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's think of this scenario when a person is cutting down a tree. Well, that's quite uh, unfortunate because we should not do this because trees are extremely important for our environment. But uh, in, in such a scenario where somebody is cutting down the tree, is that a change? Of course, that is because when you cut down the tree again, the shape, size, form, everything changes. And what about whether it is reversible or irreversible? So again, in this case also, immediately you cannot join back the tree, right? So this is going to be an irreversible change. Evaporation of water. What is evaporation? Even before we talk about it, what is evaporation? It is a process in which you heat a substance. For example, you heat water so that the liquid water gets converted into water vapor. So let's say you take some water in a pan, put it on the stove and start heating it. What happens? After some time, you see that the water starts boiling and you can actually see the vapors rising up. So the liquid water gradually gets converted into vapor and this process is known as evaporation. So when you look at this process, is there a change happening? Yes, liquid water is getting changed into vapor form of water. So obviously this is a change. So water that is the liquid water is getting converted into water vapor by evaporation. So this is a change. Now what kind of change is it? Is it, is it reversible or irreversible? Now can you bring back water from water vapor? Can you change water vapor back to liquid water? Yes. And that process is called condensation. So basically if you start cooling the water vapor, all you get is liquid water. So that is why this is a change and this is a reversible change. Now let's uh, look at some changes with balloons. So let's say you inflate a balloon. What happens? Is that a change? Of course it is because the size of the balloon increases when we inflate a balloon. So what's happening here? But the balloon still remains a balloon. And can you reverse it back? Of course you can. As soon as you stop inflating and then you leave it, what happens? It again gets deflated. So it is a reversible change. So when we talk about inflating a balloon, so inflating a balloon is definitely a change and this is a reversible change. Now when you talk about bursting a balloon, let's say you have a balloon, you throw it on somebody such that it bursts. So when the balloon bursts, what happened? Again the shape and size of the balloon changes. Now in this case, can you get back the balloon? Now once the balloon is burst, it, it is gone. So can you join it back to form the same balloon? Not really. So this would be an irreversible change. So please notice very carefully uh, when you are inflating the balloon, basically when you take out all the air from inside the balloon, you will get back the same small balloon. So that is why it is reversible. But when you talk about bursting a balloon, so it, it is like gone it is like torn so you cannot um, inflate it back to form the same balloon so that's why it is an irreversible change think of a lady who has done a lot of makeup like a uh, lot of eyeliners and uh, foundation and lipstick and all so what happens there is a change because she looks very different with so much of makeup but what kind of change is this so we will obviously call this also as a change but is it reversible or irreversible? Definitely reversible. Because in this case, as soon as she removes the makeup, she will again go be looking as usual. So this is again a reversible change. So any change that we are talking about, we actually need to analyze whether we can uh, reverse it back to the original position or not. Think of pottery making. So have you ever seen how these uh, mo mo uh, pots are made? So this is how some, somewhat like this. So what is it? Is it a reversible change or irreversible change? So these pots are made from clay. So clay when mixed with water you get that muddy clay and with that now since that is very soft and flexible so you can actually take that in this and you can give it any of your desired shape and later you bake it to so that it becomes hard. Now, as far as giving shapes is concerned, so the process of giving shapes 
is a reversible change because what, even if you have given a particular shape to a particular vessel, you can again take it back because again you can change the shape and you can get back the original thing. But when you have already baked it, because after you have given it a shape, then it is very, at that time it is very soft, it is not going to be hard. So to make it hard, you actually bake it in the sun. Now, baking this, baking of uh, these pots to form solid shapes or to form hard shapes, after baking is being done, this baking process, that would be irreversible process because immediately you cannot break those pots and uh, you cannot get that wet clay. So that would be again in the long term, a uh, long process where you can reverse it back. So that way you can say that pottery making is reversible process. Yes, in the long run, it is reversible completely. But after it has been baked to form the solid um, hard pots, then immediately you cannot reverse it back. So that part, so baking part is irreversible. But as far as giving shapes is concerned, that is reversible. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.